us mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to talk about Revelation 14 and the first fruits. All right, so to me this is very interesting, and unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of people out there that that don't understand it, and they try to fit it in with this zombie doctrine, what I call a zombie doctrine, or a, you know this doctrine that they must try to fit the scripture in with the Hollywood movie that they watched starring Nicolas Cage. And I want to make it simple and easy for you to see and to uh, you know perhaps clear any confusion that you might have regarding what is written in the book of Revelation because I, I contend this is really easy to know and to understand and it's when outsiders that don't know come in and try to tell you what it says this is where the cloud of confusion comes in alright so if you start with the premise that Jesus lays down the end time eschatology better than anybody and you realize that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and at the end of the world is when we are resurrected we are lifted up in the air and all the unsaved are gathered at our feet and destroyed forever once you understand that everything else becomes so clear and so you can't have anything in the Bible that contradicts that end time eschatology okay so when we're reading Revelation 14 for example this cannot there is no contradiction to it and I think once you understand this how things are gonna play out that the judgment of God is coming when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven once you understand that and then you read Revelation 14 from that perspective everything clears up everything is so easy and you know, I just, I gotta tell you, it, it just burns my rear end when I, when I hear people teaching all of these ridiculous doctrines that don't come from the Bible. So let's get into it. All right, Revelation 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, first of all, it's important to know that the hundred and forty-four thousand represent the saved. And here is where a cloud of confusion comes in because the Jehovah's Witnesses come in and they say, oh, it's limited to 144,000. That's not what we read in, Revel in Revelation 7. All right. And it's not what we're reading here. It's not anything that we're reading anywhere else in the Bible. All right. So there is no contradiction, there is only a lack of understanding. Alright, so when John writes here, and I looked and lo, I think you have to go back to Genesis, or I'm sorry, go back to Revelation 1. Alright, here, here's Revelation 7 that talks about the 144,000, and then lo, a great multitude which no man could number. Okay, so there shouldn't be any. Um, insecurity or any doubt that uh, the 144,000 is just a representative number it is not alright well if you're 144,001 you're not gonna get saved that's not there's not a difference God is not a respecter of persons 
okay? You cannot have a contradiction within the Bible. And there is no contradiction. There is only misunderstanding. So Revelation 1, the very first verse says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So John is writing things that angels is showing him of the things which must shortly come to pass. And so here John again is writing something that he is seeing and showing us things. All right. So, again, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him, and 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth again this is saved people alright this is something John is seeing and he's telling us what he's seeing these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Now, this is so easy to understand and so important as well that when you are born of the Spirit of God you are pure because Jesus is pure in Romans chapter 4 verse 8 blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin see when God looks at us we are not defiled we are not stained we have um, no sin at all and even John says, uh, er, in, uh, okay, let me think about this. Um, let me think about this one second. Even John, the same John that wrote Revelation, also wrote the first, second, and third Johns and the book of John. All right, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God we're pure because Jesus is pure he's so pure he just it doesn't matter for us because his purity cleanses us all from all unrighteousness okay so we're not defiled at all. We're as pure as it gets because Jesus is pure as it gets. Pure, pure. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Talk about us, those of us that are born of God. And here down at the bottom it says, These were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. This does not at all imply that we are the first resurrection. Not at all. We are the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb, but the Lamb is the first resurrection. Just as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, all right, it's important to understand this cannot contradict this cannot be a contradiction all right, there can be a lack of understanding but there cannot be a contradiction 
All right, every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Wait a second, I thought we were the first fruits. No. <laughs> this says the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And this says Christ the first fruits. So Jesus is the first resurrection. He even tells us that he is the first resurrection. He plainly flat out says I am the resurrection so Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept All right, so isn't that in the Bible somewhere too first fruits of them that slept first fruits of them that slept and there's somewhere in the Bible where it says the first fruits yeah where am I at here oh it's right it was right there it is okay but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So he has risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. And then afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. This cannot contradict what we're reading in Revelation 14. It doesn't. And it burns my rear end that so many people are teaching a contradiction and they teach it because they lack understanding and I contend strongly that they're not trusting the Bible that they read they're trusting what other men say the Bible says I hope, I hope I'm making myself clear I really do I and in their mouth was find no guile for they are without fault before the throne of God. Go back to Romans 4. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. We are sinless because he is sinless. So this is talking about those of us that are saved those of us that are born of God and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people now it's important again I keep saying the same thing but I I think it gets lost on 99 percent of the preachers if not a hundred percent you go back to Revelation chapter 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John and I saw John and I saw another angel fly he's telling us another vision the angels are showing John the angels are showing John things visions showing things visions that must come to pass and I saw, I, John, saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue people. This is not a, well, this happened, and then now this happened after. It's, this is not what's happening at all. If you look at it that way, buddy, you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble because that's, Look, you, you got just a whirlwind of confusion to look at it that way. I want you to consider this real quickly. Um, let's see, we'll do it this way. Here in Revelation 6, we've got the wrath of the Lamb, which is the wrath of God. The wrath of the great day of His wrath has come. Now, I like remember what I said. The wrath of God happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up and the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. It's that simple. Here we got in Revelation 6, the wrath of God. 
Revelation 11. The angry, the the nations were angry. The wrath has come. The time of the dead, and then um, Revelation 14, or yeah, right there it is. Then the same shall drink of the wrath of God, and then let's go to to 15. Filled up the wrath of God, and then uh, you got the vials. The seven golden vials of the wrath of God being poured out. Sixteen being poured out. Alright, and um, in nineteen, I believe it is. Yeah, the wine press. And the, he treadeth the wine press of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. If you, if you're, you cannot say this is multiple wraths of God. You can't. It's stupid. You can't say, well, there's going to be one wrath of God, and then after that, it's going to be another wrath of God. Because the wrath of God happens at the end of the world. You can't have multiple ends of the worlds. All you have to do is connect the dots and realize it's talking about the same thing. And I don't know why you'd want to waste your time trying to... Uh, you know compensate I guess this idea that these are multiple ends of the world these are multiple wraths of God and you, I've noticed you probably noticed too that that these all these preachers that they can't explain it they don't get into it they make wild assertions without explanation and justification for their wild claims they never do as so long as they get their 50 minutes in and call to service that's, that's really that's all they care about and you see this over and over and over again and I mean really doesn't anybody care about the truth this stuff is so simple it's incredible it's it's remarkable it's fascinating and and I just uh, you know it's very intrig for me it's very intriguing because when you understand it you start to see things clear and so much comes to light that it's amazing it really is okay so again I, I John saw another angel this is a vision that he's being shown this is not okay well then after everybody's saved and then the gospel comes to the earth I mean for crying out loud you know really and what happens is these guys are taking advantage of people that don't read their Bible because they themselves don't read the Bible I and mean, that's the only thing that I can see happening maybe they read the Bible but they just don't believe it's from God and they're trying to justify their zombie doctrine when they're reading the Bible I really think that All right, verse 8 and there followed another angel saying Babylon has fallen has fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication this is talking about Vatican City all right now let me explain this okay so there's another angel which is a part of this uh, these visions that are being shown to John that's it and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his in Indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Now, um, 
let's walk through this. All right, okay, all right, okay. So first of all, when it's talking about the beast and its image and receiving the mark in his forehead or in his hand, this is talking about the, be the beast of Revelation, which is the fourth beast of Daniel. And after the fourth beast comes the end. And then Daniel talks about the fifth kingdom, which is the everlasting kingdom. So this all squares with everything that Jesus says and what we read all throughout the Bible. That when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And we will be transformed into our glorified bodies. And the unsaved will be destroyed. So, right now, we have... a oh, Billions and billions and billions of people who worship the beast right now. Now, it's important to understand that the beast is the government. It's the kingdom of this world. Alright, so we see it all the time. People putting their trust in politicians. They argue left. They argue right. They argue independent and all this sort of nonsense. Because they argue these things because they believe these politicians will save them. They'll save this world. They'll, they'll save their lives. They'll take us to the moon and beyond. That's what they believe. And so they worship, they respect the politicians of the world. Not realizing, understanding that all roads lead to Rome. All right, this I know it kind of seems complex, but it's really not. If you go to, um, uh, if you go to Revelation 17, you see that the Vatican City reigns over the kings of the earth. So you take your favorite politician, right, Joe Biden or. Uh, Barack Obama or George Bush or Donald Trump and you think oh the, the leaders of the world leaders of the free world or whatever no they're under the Pope all of them and they're all working together left and right they're putting on a show to divide the people to get them to get the people divided because you don't want the people united you want them against themselves and not against the rich people you go back to Psalm 2 why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing it's a great question the kings of the earth set themselves well you think you're setting them no you think your vote matters? No. These guys ain't leaving their power to chance at all. They got the power. They got all the control. They're only putting on a show to make you think you're playing a part. You're playing a part, all right, but it's the part of a fool. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's you and I that are born of God saying, let us break their bands asunder. Don't let them get united and cast their cords from us. There's no way for us to replace them because they have all the power and all the control. They're putting on a big show. And billions of people are fooled by them. But he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Okay. And so this is a great chapter, but let's get back on topic. Alright. So, the mark of the beast, the um, 
the beast in his image and and where are we at here and the smoke ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name this is all spiritual it's a spiritual book revelation is talking about the angels uh, showing John things which must shortly come to pass and of course we know that we ought to know the angels are spirits all right and so that's very it's very spiritual it's very real it's more real than the physical all right you think of uh, for example uh, circumcision you cut off your part of your pee pee that's not the real circumcision the real circumcision is the circumcision of the heart all right where you cut off your flesh from um, the spirit right circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart so this is more real all right so take baptism for example the water baptism is not real even though you can see it experience it you can feel it the real baptism is the baptism of Jesus when you are born of the Spirit of God that's the true baptism that's the real baptism okay so also if you apply that same thinking to the beast and the the worshiping the respecting of politicians right and the taking his name all right the the beast and the image the image that the government creates is this image that they're gonna save you they're the saviors and we need them to you know pass a new law we need them to spend more money on this you know I saw a, you know a climate change uh, protester at the US Open a couple nights ago uh, and, and, and the, the guy he glued his feet to the cement floor protesting they want to you know end fossil fuels you know these guys they believe that the government can save them and they're so desperate they you guys gotta save us you gotta save us we're desperate now I believe they're being paid by rich people but that's a whole nother thing the fact is they bought into it they believe that the government can save them rich people can save you and that's what you know you see people uh, desperately wanting to believe in space travel and UFOs and all that sort of stuff they want to believe anything and everything but the simple truth of our Lord Jesus Christ so all right, I'm ranting a little bit I, f I feel but I just want to make this very clear this should, should this isn't rocket science the beast is the fourth kingdom of this world which is the kingdom of this world and it's not just in one country it's all over the world where people are putting their trust in the politicians rather than putting their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ here is the patience of the Saints here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus all right verse 13 and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth yeah saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them see Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath we are putting our rest in him all the work has already been done for us we just have to rest in him pretty simple stuff really 
If the Son of Man shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. All right, or free from the burdens of having to work to be saved. And the truth, the reality is, it's always been about faith. And so if we have faith in God, God does it all. Without God, nothing can be done. Nothing, nothing can be done without God. Nothing at all. Okay. So, and I looked, and behold, a white cloud. See, this is not Jesus returning a uh, 14th or 17th time on the 93rd return. No. This is talking about the same thing, man. All you have to do is be, be able to connect the dots. Why make it confusing? Well, because it sells books and they make movies out of it. That's why. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like the, like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to, of, to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe now and again this is consistent with everything that we've read in the Bible this is consistent with Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 it's consistent with 1st Thessalonians 4 1st Corinthians 15 all throughout the Bible Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel so this is the very same prophecy that's being fulfilled that's talked about all throughout the Bible. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. It's the same end of the world. Daniel talks about it. It's, it's, in, it's all, throughout, all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. Jesus gives a great parable here in Matthew 13. The harvest is the end of the world. All right, you see the parallel there? For the harvest of the earth is ripe. See the parallel? This is not two different harvests. All you have to do is connect the dots. It's very hard for some people because they're trying to sell a doctrine that is consistent with a movie that they watched on TV last night. I'm really, they're trusting in what men say the Bible says rather than trusting what the plain Word of God so simply, so easily says. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. You think Jesus got it wrong? You think Jesus was ignorant? Yeah, well, this is the third end of the world. And he's got to come and then come again, and then he's going to. There's going to be 26 different ends of the world. No, 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 no. Jesus got it right. All we have to do is put our trust in him. And the parable of the wheat and the tares, he explains very easily that at the end, at the uh, end of the world, the harvest is the end of the world, the wheat are gathered into his barn. That's the same thing as saying that we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And the tares, which are the unsaved, are gathered at our feet. Same thing we're reading here in, in Revelation 20, when it says Satan is loosed and he gathers together the unsaved at our, oh, excuse me, at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. All right, same thing. It's not a different occurrence. It's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. The harvest is the end of the world. And in Revelation 14, it talks about, For the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. 
And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. This is when we are lifted up in the air. This is when we are transformed into our glorified bodies. When we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible. All right, this is when that old saying that that um, that this is when uh, it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory we you know this is consistent with in it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel it's the same thing we're reading the same thing over and over it's told to us over and over again and it's given it to us from every possible angle so that there shouldn't be any confusion any doubt there's only one stipulation and that is you must believe that's it you must have faith and believe these are the words of God you know this is the words of Paul right and so this drives me nuts man drives me nuts well, the Paul said this, but we got to interpret it like that, like the serpent tells us. No, 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 no. If, I mean, all throughout the Bible, the whole Bible is from God. It's not from men. All right. So consider this verse here. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the scripture comes from God from the Spirit of God think all right that's not enough for you consider what Jesus says the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life all right John 6 it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profit and nothing the words that I speak unto you the words our life the words are spirit so this is not coming from man it's coming from God and if you believe that then this stuff ought to be ought to be simple it really is but for so many men it is hard because they're putting their trust in what other men say that's a bad bad way to go about things man don't trust anybody I'm telling you just trust the Bible this is the words of God alright so in 1st Thessalonians 4 when it says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this is a one-time deal this happens at the end of the world when the harvest comes when there is that separation of the of the sheep and the goats right this is a the separation of the wheat and the tares right this is the end of the world when the saved are divided from the unsaved all right it's not this doesn't happen several times it happens one time we're being told the same thing over and over and over and he that sat upon the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle hmm. and another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe now we read this all throughout the Bible this is not a separate unique event this is the same thing being told to us over and over in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 says the same thing at the last trump at the end of the world he shall send his angels and they shall gather together his elect this is talking about the same thing it's the same moment in time this is not 
going to happen 27 different times? Man, this is the one-time deal. It's the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's judgment day. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the judgment of God. It is judgment day. And the judgment is, are you saved or are you not saved? It's really that simple. And of course, if you're saved, that judgment has already been made. If you're saved right now, that judgment has already been made. But when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the final judgment. If you're not saved at that point, then the judgment is death. For the unsaved, the second death, right? And um, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered. Oh, right there. Uh, yeah, that's where I left off. And gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God again that's a separation right it's the same thing same thing and the wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs Let's not make a big deal out of this. All right. It's given us an image, a vision, an idea of what is going to come. Let's not try to get stupid about this, okay? It's real simple. Very, very, very simple. All right. So when the enemy is destroyed, this is when the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. All right, this is also known as the Great Supper. All right, when there's going to be dead bodies all over and the, the birds, the fowls of heaven are going to have themselves a feast. All right, but this here, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, a thousand and six, that's sixteen hundred furlongs, you figure out how much a furlong is let's not let's not get crazy All right and the wine press was trodden without the city without the city and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse bridles I mean I, it, I'm not really against uh, you know people analyzing you know comparing um, you know those that have horses right and the furlongs and uh, making the comparisons I don't have a problem with that what I have a problem with is when people take this and they try to make it um, a separate event or like an extra event or something that is not consistent with everything else that we've read in the Bible alright so that's it that's Revelation 14 all right, and so I, was, I talked to, you know, about the first fruits, but I want to reiterate, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb, we are the first fruits of the Lamb, which is Jesus, and this is a one-time deal. All right, we are special in the eyes of God right now, and when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are resurrected because he has led the way for us. He has died and resurrected and ascended to heaven. And we're going to follow him. We that are born of God. He's led the way. There's no reason at all to, to stray beyond that. No reason at all. And I've heard this. A lot of times when people say, oh, the first resurrection, well, that means there's going to be a second resurrection. Well, if there's going to be a second resurrection, then there's going to be a third resurrection. And you might as well try to sell people on the idea that one day they're going to grow antennas on their head. Why not? I mean, really, 
why not? If you're going to get ridiculous, go all out ridiculous. I mean, why limit stupidity? Why not just be all stupid? Yeah, look, it, there's a fir there's a first resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, shall reign with him a thousand years. Right now, we are partakers of his resurrection. Right now, the second death has no power over us. Right now, we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now. And right now, we reign with him. Right now. Now, what about the second resurrection? You're, you're missing it, man. If you don't get the first resurrection, what, where are you going to get the second resurrection? There is no second resurrection. You missed it. The understanding. The meaning. With the first resurrection. So also, are you missing it with the first fruits? See, we are God's people. It's too many we are God's chosen people. The first fruits are special, right? Oh, you know, I was going to get into this too. For the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And Jesus is the first fruits. And it's because He's holy, we're holy. Because he's pure, we're pure. Because he's clean, we're clean. All right. I think I've gone on a long, long enough. But, um, you know, I appreciate uh, your guys' comments. I appreciate you watching. I hope I'm helpful for somebody, at least one person, because it's so difficult. We live in a world where there's so much deception. And it's only getting worse. And I, I've showed that many times. And here I'm having a con. Yep. I, Peter 2, or 1 Peter 2, I am present tense. And they will be future tense. Oh, this poor woman. The, the Revelation 20 clearly says that we are priests of God and of Christ. And he says, yep, I'm a priest of God, and so will they in the future. Oh, so I'll, I'll continue that with her, and but I'll end this video right now. I appreciate, uh, <laughs> I appreciate uh, if you're still listening to this. I appreciate. It. Leave a comment. Tell me I'm wrong. Just challenge me. Even if you're not sure, present a viewpoint that might be contrary to what I've shared with you today, and have a great weekend. All right.